Hi guys, it's Jordan here from Artisan Electrics. I recently did a Hager consumer unit install, taking out an old consumer unit and putting in a new Hager RCBO board. And I thought I'd do a little sort of step-by-step -step video for you so you could see how it goes. Um, share with you some of the points that I like from the Hager boards and um, just give you an idea of how a normal board change goes. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, smash that like button and hit the subscribe for more great videos. Thank you. So this is the current consumer unit and we're going to be replacing it with a Hager RCBO board. So I'm going to take this one apart, remove the old board and then start mounting the new one. So let's see what's inside the box. So first we've got the Hager Gang hashtag logo picture for your social media. We've got a little instruction booklet that should be left with the customer, which talks about how to find where a fault is and things like that. And then there's the stickers, which Hager have recently redone and they're really good quality now. This little thing is the tail entry plate. Uh, just to allow the tails to go in, it's like a grommet type thing. And then we've got the board itself. Really neatly designed, very sturdy, good quality. Flap up lid. And screws which aren't easily cross threaded or anything like that. And they don't fall out when you actually unscrew. The lid, they've got little things that hold them in place. And then inside you've got the buzz bar, uh, which is really good quality. And you've got some grommet strip, which is also good quality and easy to fit. So it looks like nothing, but this grommet strip is actually really good. That's the main switch and it comes pre-installed with the neutral tail pre-connected up to the neutral bar. I got these RCBOs to go in the board. Now this is an ADM 140. It's a 40 amp and they don't do a 40 amp in the mini RCBO type. So this is a standard RCBO size, um, which has an earth tail as well as a neutral tail that needs to be connected. So you just unwind the neutral tail. I usually like to straighten them as best as I can. And then it just connects into the neutral bar at the top there. Obviously it's always good to connect them in order. And the earth tail does the same. Now something that you should do first is knock out the cable entries. So I'm gonna use a rear cable entry here. They're just these metal panels, you knock them out really easy um, and then you put the grommet strip in to protect the cables so that they're not going to be scratched or damaged by the bare metal when you're pulling them into the board and I usually just start halfway around somewhere get the edge of the grommet strip in and then work it round all the way round smoothly pushing it in properly and then fit it up as close to the other end as you can and cut it to the right length, just short 
and then pop it in so it fits and it it fits in all the way around. That gives a nice neat smooth cable entry for your cables. Now put some earth sleeving over the functional earth tail there just to identify it. This is sped up slightly by the way, just so you don't have to be bored by very small things to do, but I thought it'd be useful for you to see. And I've just pre-connected it in there. Obviously we've got the earth of the actual circuit that needs to go into place as well, but I just connected it in just to keep it out of the way. And actually just undoing all these earth terminals now, opening them up to the right size so that they're there open and ready to connect the cables later and I'll do the same with the neutral terminals now just open them all up so that we can quickly and easily connect the neutral tails so here we connect the neutral tail for the first RCBO the 40 amp and then I'm going to install some mini RCBOs to this board as well these are fairly new design from Hager and in fact, the latest design, which these ones are, they've just changed them so that they are type A as standard, which means that they do a DC current as well as AC. And they're basically the same size as an MCB and they don't have an earth, functional earth connection needed. Literally all they've got is a neutral tail. They click in and you just, connect your neutral tail there into the neutral bar. In this video I'm going to fully load the RCBO board before installing it but often what I do is just install the carcass, just the metal board first, get all the cables into it and then install the RCBOs afterwards. It's six of one half and does it in the other really, sometimes it's easier to do it that way, sometimes it's easier to just fully load it beforehand because you can do it on the floor in a nice open space. So that's what I've done here. Just connecting these RCBOs now. And the good thing about these as well is that you can actually do insulation testing with the outgoing cables connected. That's what the little blue label says on the top of these, if you notice them. It says that you can actually do an insulation test at the outgoing terminals with the RCBO turned off. They are 6KA, I believe. Um, so they're only suitable for domestic situations, not for um, commercial or industrial usually. But they're perfect for a house where you're changing a consumer unit like this. Um, it just makes it so much easier to do a nice, neat consumer unit install when you've got more space to work with the cables to dress them back inside the board. So I just like to run all the neutral tails nice and neatly together um, just dress them in neatly like that. Now this is the tail entry plate so there's a little few knockouts at the bottom there you can choose which one you want to run your tails into just knock it out and then you're pre-supplied with this little plastic device which just clicks in you can click it either way around and it's got a size, just perfect size for the two tails, 25 mil and 16 mil earth to go in there as well. This is the copper buzz bar. And as you can see, it's got pre-insulated cover on it. And the great thing about the Hager RCBOs is that there's no chance of you tightening up the screw and it not making contact with the buzz bar. It's just the way they're designed, that will never happen. So you can just push the bus bar in and then screw them up one by one. And you know for sure that you're gonna have good contact with the bus bar. You're not gonna have missed it somehow. Um, like in some cheaper consumer units, the screws kind of push out and then sometimes they can be sitting in front of the bus bar, if you know what I mean. These are the blanks. Uh, so I prefer to use these proper 
consumer unit blanks they look neat they fit nicely and there's no chance of them falling out when you just take the cover off the board or something like that so they're great and they just click in like a normal mcb they just mount onto the buzz bar uh, the, on the din rail there so just preload those and they are the same can be used in tpnn boards so like commercial or industrial boards but you just use them the other way around so here we are the board is loaded up and ready to go and that's where the cables will go in so here we have the old place where the board was all the cables hanging out so what i do is just thread them through the hole at the back of the new consumer unit and just offer up the board against the wall mark the fixing holes then i have to take it off again drill and plug the fixing holes then put it back up and fix it to the wall This can be a little bit tricky because you've got to thread all the cables through uh, without them getting caught. That's why sometimes it's easier to actually mount the board without the MCBs or RCBOs in because it gives you a little bit more space to work with inside the board. But in this case, I managed to do it fairly easily with the RCBOs in place. So just thread it on like that. And you've got four fixing holes pre-made in the back of the board. So I just get my little level and put it on top of the board. Try and find the right height that's going to be best for the cables so that you can get the most length out of them level on top kind of push it against the wall make sure none of the cables are trapped behind it or anything like that and they can all enter the back of the board easily push it against the wall make sure it's level and then i've got my little hole marking tool which just sprays a little bit of green marker in where the holes need to be and then I can remove the board from the wall and drill the holes in the right place so in this case I've just done the two corners first top and bottom I'll drill inside those then get the board roughly fixed to the wall with those two and once I know for sure it's level and it's going to be a nice flush fit, then I'll mark the other two holes and drill and plug those. It takes a little bit longer this way, but it makes sure that the board's going to be nice and level and flush and neatly installed. It's so important to get a board like this mounted properly. Get it fixed firmly to the wall because you don't want it coming loose later on or anything like that so I'll get these two screws in now trying to do it with the screwdriver is not so easy so I get my magnetic drill um, screwdriver bit it goes a lot easier get one screw in then level up the other side Get the other screw in. And then just check the leveling. Screw it up fairly tight to the wall. And then mark up the other holes. So now that you know it's gonna be nice and level. Cause there's nothing worse than screwing a board back and then realizing that actually you can't quite get it level it's really annoying when that happens so i like to be quite precise when doing my fixing holes and just remove those two screws loosen up the board
fill the final two fixing holes. With a couple of raw plugs. I use Fisher raw plugs, by the way. I don't use those really cheap and cheerful ones that you get, but I use quite good quality raw plugs. And I find that makes all the difference. So they don't come loose, which uh, if you've got a hole that's in quite a soft wall and the hole becomes slightly bigger than necessary, the cheap and cheerful raw plugs tend to come loose and then you end up spending loads of time trying to wedge in another half a raw plug or something like that. Just buy decent raw plugs. Fisher are the best. And they just fit every time. They grip well. And they give you a real good solid fixing. So we get those two corners screwed back. That's it. We'll do them sort of fairly tight with just enough play to be able to move the board slightly so that you can do some fine tuning and get it exactly level and then once you're happy with it you can tighten the screws to their full tightness so that you know the board is exactly level see i'm just doing a little bit of adjustment there and then finally screwing them back properly the screw holes in the Honeycomb board are sort of um, rectangular, sort of oval shape. So you can, you've got a bit of play. You've got about half a centimetre of play on each of them. One of the blanks fell out there, so I'm just putting that back. And then starting to just dress the, the cable. So. These are um, a little bit old cables. This one is a six mil that going to the cooker circuit and uh, it's got, got that um, kind of earth that's stranded. So it's like five strands or something, the earth. It's a little bit fiddly to try and strip it back without breaking the strands. And of course the cable's too thick to use a normal stripping tool, so I'll just get my long nose pliers on the earth and use the earth to strip that back. Doing it carefully, obviously, to make sure that you don't damage any of the cores within the cable. But it's fairly easy to strip the cable back this way. I'll just put a few twists on that earth just to make it nice and straight. And then I can get some earth sleeving over it. Just cut off the excess sheath there. And then what I do with my hands is try and just warm up the conductors slightly by rubbing my hands along the cables. And that just makes them easier to straighten. So I try and straighten them all as much as I can. So get any old kinks out of them or anything from the previous board. And that makes it looks so much neater when you start dressing the cables back so I'm just going to go through all of these now and strip them properly one by one strip the sheaths back to just after where they come inside the board put earth sleeving on the earths trim them back to the right lengths and you can see there's white tape on the live conductors so what I do when I'm taking down the old board is when I pull the live out of each circuit or fuse, I label it up with the circuit number from the previous distribution board schedule. Um, so I'll put like so I'll put a number one or something for circuit one, for example, and I'll put a little description as well to remind me of what it was. So like you know CK for cooker or LU for lights upstairs. LD for lights downstairs, something like that, so that I don't get confused with the old numbering and the new numbering. Uh, and then, obviously, when I actually, actually connect the wires into the new circuit breakers, I just remove that bit of white tape when I'm cutting the cable back to the right length. 
but at least it enables me to make sure that I know exactly which each circuit is and which circuit breaker it should go into. So we just try to straighten these up as, as neatly as we can as we go along. I always put new earth sleeving on everything so even if the earth wires that are there are going to stay the same length and there is old earth sleeving on, well I'll never reuse the old earth sleeving, I'll always put new earth sleeving on everything because it just means that everything matches and it looks neater. And if there are two earth cables for example, this is a ring circuit so you see the two earths there. It may be that one's longer than the other because of the way they previously did it, but I always like to cut them back to the same length so that they match when you're tying them into the earth terminal there when you're connecting them in. Because um, I like to sort of give a little loop as I go in so that you can easily pull them out later when you're doing like ring testing, for example, if you're doing an EICR in five years' time. The electrician can easily just unscrew the terminal, pull the little loop out, do a test and then push it back in without messing up, you know, the whole way that the wires are making it look messy again. So here what I'm doing is connecting the earths first. So just connecting the earths circuit by circuit into the earth terminals. And then, um, once I've done the earth, then I'll do the live and neutral for that particular circuit. I'm doing a split load board, so it's got the neutrals going into the neutral bar at the top there. What I'll tend to do is do the earths and the neutrals, and then do the lives last. But in this case, I'm just doing it circuit by circuit, so... Um, I just connected in the earth for that crooked circuit and now I'm just stripping the live and neutral back and connecting them into the RCBO there. And then sometimes you've got a bit of extra length on the live and neutrals what you can do is just tuck them behind the circuit breakers uh, and that means that you know if ever in future you need a bit of extra length then you've got it there I always like to have enough length on all of the conductors that they could reach any circuit breaker at any position within the board if possible and the way I was taught to actually do that is always strip or cut the cables to about an inch past the box an inch past the furthest point in the box from where they are that was what my electrical teacher taught me at college and as a general rule that works quite well obviously when you're doing a board change like this you might have some cables which are just too short and it's not possible to do that so rather than extending them I prefer to just make them reach to the closest circuit breaker because I prefer to do that rather than add an additional joint into the um, the conductors which could obviously be a weak point that could get hot etc some people they like to do crimp connections and extend the conductors within the board but I only do that if it's absolutely necessary uh, and in general I won't do feral crimps I'll just do um, wire goes like two way wire goes because I trust those more than the than those through through crimp things don't really trust those very much they come loose quite easily so it's just a process really step by step cable by cable and it's important to just take your time and do it really neatly you only do this once so you think about you know all the electricians that are going to come back here in the future and open this board up and as soon as they take the cover off they have an immediate feel for how the installation is going to be based on what they see inside the board. So if they see a bird's nest, alarm bells will instantly start ringing. Whereas if they see a nice, neatly connected board with all the cables 
neatly dressed within the consumer unit, they immediately go, ah, somebody who cared did this. And so it's likely that throughout the rest of the installation, things are going to be done properly. Um, obviously, that mainly applies if you're doing a board from new, for a new installation, because in this case, the rest of the wiring throughout the house, I didn't do it, you know. Um, I'd done an EICR and I've rectified a few things that I found, but still, you know, the, it's, the rest of the installation is not up to the quality that I would have liked if I'd have installed it first. But it's just always good to do a nice, neat board and hopefully as well, you'll be the electrician who comes back in five years time or 10 years time to do the EICR and you make your life much easier. Um, and you just avoid so many problems. And anyway, to be honest, time-wise, to do it neatly or to not do it neatly doesn't make that much difference. But if you do it neatly, take pride in your work, you're going to enjoy it more. At the end, you'll be able to stand back and look at it and think, wow, yeah, that looks great. Take a few pictures, put them on Instagram, share them on Twitter, make other electricians jealous. It's just um, one of the biggest pleasures of being an electrician for me, doing a consumer unit change. I think it's very satisfying to take out an old horrible bird's nest of a board, tidy it up, put a new board like this in, you know, especially an RCBO board, which you just think, wow, you know, you're really putting in something quality, something that's going to protect the customer so much better and make fault finding so much easier because now if there's a fault on one circuit they're not going to have an RCB, uh, RCD which trips and they lose all of their power instead the individual circuit breaker will go and they'll know okay you know there's a problem on my lighting circuit or there's a problem with something that's plugged in on the sockets circuit and all of the other circuits will still be working you know those little things make a big difference in people's lives when something goes wrong. And also with all the electronic devices that we have these days, the earth leakage current can actually be quite high. So much so that sometimes we come across situations where an RCD keeps nuisance tripping. And there is, when you do tests on, on the circuits, there is nothing evident. There are no faults evident. But basically what's happening is all the devices that they've got plugged in, the one milliamp here, two milliamps there of earth leakage current from their devices is adding up and it's tripping the 30 milliamp RCBO. And it's such a nuisance. And in that case, the only thing to do is to add more RCDs or the best case scenario is what we're doing here. Just put RCBOs in. And so the earth leakage current is shared across all the circuits and you're not going to get that nuisance tripping. Now here what I'm doing is just connecting all the circuits but you'll notice I've not done any testing yet. So sometimes what I like to do is before I, I connect the wires into the circuit breakers I do the tests so for example the insulation tests I'll just do those before I put the cables into the circuit breakers and that saves me removing them again and certainly the ring tests as well you know before I connect the two earths or the two lives or the two neutrals for the ring circuit I'll just do uh, a ring continuity test and that saves me from, once I've connected the board, disconnecting those wires just to do the tests again. So it saves a bit of time. But in this case, for demonstration purposes, I've just done all the connecting in one go, and then I'll go back and do the testing afterwards. This is a cupboard under the stairs, by the way, just so you know. It's a sort of a pantry off the kitchen. 
um, which runs under the stairs, so you've got the sloping ceiling sloping up there towards me. It was a little bit tight for space, but not too bad. So just connecting the lighting circuits. Neatly cutting those cables, stripping the wires back. I like to double over the wires if they're 1.5 mil or less. I'll just double them back. And that was something I was taught to do in college as well. And that just means that uh, you've got more surface area to connect to when you're putting the wires into the terminals. Gives you a better connection overall. So for the lighting circuits, that's what I do. Just double the, double the ends over with a pair of long nose pliers. And then uh, you get a much better connection on those wires. And to strip the cables, I use um, an automatic wire stripping tool, which works really well, saves a bit of time, and you get a nice, neat finish to the stripping of the wires. So here we go, just warming them up, you see, and then just take that bit of tape off that I've put to label it up. Straighten them up nicely, cut them to the right length, strip them, double them over, and then pop them into the terminals, just screw them up. I haven't used a torque screwdriver here, but I would recommend getting a torque screwdriver if possible, it's something that's on my list. Um, because that enables you to get exactly the right torque that is recommended by the suppliers. So usually on the side of a circuit breaker, it will actually have a torque setting that is recommended by the manufacturer. And you can just set your torque screwdriver to the right setting, tighten the terminal until it clicks and you know that you've reached the right torque setting. I mean, to be honest, I've never had a problem with over tightening. I think that after a while you get a knack for how tight a terminal should be and you learn to not over tighten them or not under tighten them. But um, to be absolutely safe, a Torx screwdriver is the only way to know for sure that you're reaching the right setting. And there we go, all done. Just check that the blanks are all in place and then fine tuning on the wires just to try and make sure that they're all the right height. And there's the finished product with all the wires connected. Now I put the tails in afterwards and so you can see it there with the tails and fairly happy with the finished product. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Now just a bit of labeling up. So we just take the labels from the supplied package uh, the great thing about these Hager ones is that there's a real variety of different names for the labels. So you can pretty much cover every kind of possible option in a domestic setting just by using the standard labels. I do have a label printer that I use sometimes, a brother one, 
that you can print your own custom labels but most of the time now with these Hager boards the labels that they supply are perfectly adequate so I don't need to use it. Now they do have in the packet stickers with little pictures on as well. I think some people like to use these and stick them on the actual circuit breakers themselves because the circuit breakers have a little window on them that you can sort of lever down and then put a sticker on. I personally prefer not to put stickers on the circuit breakers themselves. I just don't think it looks that neat. But, um, you know, everyone has their own preferences. So let me know what you like to do, whether you like to put the stickers on the circuit breakers as well or not. We've got the new updated RCD testing label going on there with a six monthly RCD tests instead of quarterly and the two wiring colors label as well, which is supplied in the packet. And then afterwards, I like to put my own labels on as well with my company details and the inspection dates. So that was it guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Overall, I really love the Hager boards. They are expensive or should I say they're not cheap, but they're really worth the money. They're excellent build quality. And I personally am only gonna be pricing up my jobs for Hager boards now, unless a customer specifically requests a cheaper board. But in general, I'm just gonna be fitting Hager boards because I think they're excellent quality. They offer good value for money. They're easy to install, quick to install. So they will save you time on installation and there's going to be less callbacks because they're a really good quality product. So overall, very happy with these Hager boards. And you can now get the Hager SPD boards, which have got a surge protection device built in as well, next to the main switch. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please smash that like button and hit the subscribe button for more great videos coming up soon.